Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're up to part 47 of the Emergency Storage Shed Cleanout Series, 47 weeks in a row. Now this week we have some old bottles. Those of you who have been watching, uh, a few people spotted these bottles quite a while back. I'm not even sure what's in here. They're obviously antique bottles. Let's have a look at them and see what value we've got. And here they are here. There's not much to go on these shelves in the middle of the room. And I still have to be mindful of the fact that a lot of you guys watching this video would never have seen my channel before. So we're cleaning out an emergency storage shed. I moved a lot of stuff here from my old shop when I had to get out in a hurry. I clean out people's houses and sheds for a living. I've also been a bottle collector most of my life. There's a chance that I've dug some of these. In fact, that one's a Matoa one, so I would have certainly dug that. Looks like a bit of, um, a, bit of a mixture from my old collection, but in fitting with my channel and showing everyone how to deal with stuff, you don't get much more stuff than what I've got. And I'm not cherry picking, that's one of the secrets. We're working our way through this shelf in the middle, and then we can probably, I think, we'll attack this shelf on this side and eventually clean this whole shed out and start, well, continuing to set up my highly efficient and fully functional workshop in my dreams. Uh, let's get this box on the bench and go through these bottles. This is quite a big tub, actually. Now, I did hint that I'll do a video on how to clean up old bottles. I will do that, and I'll probably do that immediately following this one. We won't confuse the two because then I can put in the title how to clean up old bottles and people that need to know will find it. This video will go through what we've got here. We'll see what we're going to keep, which probably won't be very much. We'll work out what to do with the rest of them. I would presume sell them. We'll put a few aside for cleaning, for examples, for the next video. And I'll give you a rough idea of what valuation, what, yeah, what value we've got here. Let's unbox them and have a look. Okay, I don't think we have too much value here. And these, I think, have been dug a long time ago and they've probably just been sitting in the box. I don't think they've ever been cleaned. No, I'm pretty sure they haven't. Now, I always used to bring home these cod bottles. They had the marble in the top of them. And many of them you find with the, the top smashed off exactly like this one because the kids of the era used to collect the marbles. So they'd think nothing of just smashing the top off it, grabbing the marble, and then throwing the rest out. So it's not of a lot of value. Even Well, I guess if it was a very rare cod, you can have new tops put on them. They can be repaired. It's always going to be a repaired bottle, but it's still going to bring some money if it's a very rare one. I like to bring home ones just to make sure it's not a variation. Uh, for example, this H-Presser from Matoa, Sometimes they have lemonade on the back, sometimes they don't, sometimes that lemonade is written across, sometimes there's a maker's mark along the bottom here. This one has an M on the bottom for Melbourne Glassworks, but a lot of the cods back then were made in England, and they'll have various maker's marks on the heel, sometimes right around the base. So I like to collect variations, and I'll bring home a broken bit just to make sure that it's not a variation that I don't have. Uh, so that's why I've kept that. It's really of not much value, but I have actually once before, and I think I included it in a video when we were at the farm once, mum's got a, a diamond tip cutting saw over there for gemstones. And dad actually back then helped me cut some tops off and we made little, well, they're kind of like vases, or I guess they could, they're probably a bit heavier for a vase, you know, pencil holder on your desk or something like that. So if you can cut the top off neatly, they're, they've got to be worth something like that. So I might do that with this one one day. Uh, we have another broken cod bottle here. This one's not from Matoa. It's from Ararat. Uh, a. Deans and Company. A lot of bottles. Prolific um, producer of bottles, this company. Well, they didn't make the bottles, but they were a soft drink company. And they did have lots of different variations. I don't know if this one's a rare one or not. Uh, it's a soda water. It's a smaller sort. So... If you're into bottles and you want to learn about these cod bottles, the 13-ounce bottles, and you can see the size difference there, there's not a lot, but the bigger ones were 12 or 13-ounce. They sometimes were only 10-ounce. They did vary a bit. The smaller ones were generally a 6-ounce or sometimes a 7-ounce, but they are a smaller version, and the smaller ones were soda water. This one actually says it on the back. The larger ones were pretty well always lemonade. So... I don't know why I brought that one home. I don't even remember where I got it. It's clearly just been dug out of the soil. It looks like it was with a bit of ash. Quite often rubbish got buried with ash from the fireplace. Uh, this one, again, has an M on the base for Melbourne Glassworks. 
So I guess it might be worth showing a picture of this to someone that collects bottles from this company just to see if it is a particularly rare variety, but it wouldn't really have much value other than perhaps, as I said, cutting the top off. Now, this one is a, a chemical bottle, um, possibly... Oh, look, I'm not totally sure what sort of chemical is it. Here we go. It says ammonia. There we go. Now, I know exactly what sort of chemical it was. Not to be taken. I mentioned in my last video about bottles that they often have ribs or stars on them if they're a poison. So, uh, I think that's actually a scrubs. They call them a company with scrubs. It doesn't say it here. It just says poisonous and ammonia not to be taken. So, quite a common general household bottle. This one would date to the, you know, we can't see what's on the bottom. It's got a bit of an Owens ring there. It's still got some burnt paper or something on it. Uh, the top is, is a machine made top. The seam goes right through to the very top lip, but I reckon it'd be very early 20s when they just started machine making bottles. It's got some opalescence in it, and we'll talk about that with the next video on cleaning bottles. We might use this one as an example and give a bit of a clean up and see what what um, improvements we can make. Uh, Value-wise, look, if it came up really mint, sparkling clean, I'd probably go $10. Um, I think it's only going to be a $5 bottle, but I'll put that aside and we'll give that a go with our cleaning in the next video. This one's a very classic shape of a fennel. A fennel was a disinfectant. There was lots of different companies. This was Inguison's. Um, they're a poison bottle fennel, as I said, being a disinfectant and often used around the outdoor toilets. Um, so you often dig a lot up on farm sites, uh, applied top and a lot of uh, twisty type marks to the top. So it's a fairly crude bottle. Um, it's got a large AGM on the bottom. So I'd say early 1920s, but it's quite a crude, quite a crude fennel. Uh, lots of stars around it. I mentioned the stars with poisons. So quite a, an attractive bottle, and some of these turn up in really nice shades of green. And as I said, there's lots of different manufacturers. This would be a fairly common one. There are some rarer varieties, but most of these are only going to be a 5 to $10 bottle tops. This is a classic shape of a Warner's um, medicine bottle or cure bottle. It's, uh, hello, Coco's come to see me. Just, Okay, sorry for the short break there. Coco had decided that I'd talked enough to the camera for a while. Now, I was saying this is a, a Warner's uh, bottle. They made uh, cures, medicines, all sorts of different concoctions back in the 1800s through into the early 1900s. Uh, Warner, it was an American company, and I believe Mr. Warner used to sell safes, as in somewhere to keep your money. And apparently he fell ill and he was cured by some quack with some snake oil. And he was that impressed that he started his own medicine company and it became world, basically worldwide. And this is actually a Melbourne bottle, but uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the early ones had a beautiful embossed safe on them. And there was lots of different uh, embossings and there was um, different cities that he had outlets in. So really big company consequently the bottles are very common this one's a 1920s one australian made they actually used to bring pretty good money on ebay back when ebay first started because none of the american warners collectors had a melbourne one but it didn't take long and the price dropped right out because they are very common uh this would clean up okay it's a little scuffed uh it might make it might only be a five dollar bottle it's around 1920s i think i said uh, it is an applied top, so the seam actually stops at the neck. But um, yeah, there's no pictorial on it, so we'd probably only go $5 on that. Uh, we have a broken one here. Now, I'm not sure if this happened in the box. That actually does look like a fresh break. Uh, although the bottom, there's an old fracture in the bottom, so it was damaged anyway. It's a USA bottle. It wouldn't have been worth a lot anyway. Um, Lowell, Massachusetts, USA sarsaparilla so i guess it was a concentrate uh, and it has compound x i don't know what that means and airs i've seen them around before it's uh, early 1900s uh, applied top obviously in that condition it's not worth anything it's got some really bad opalization on it as well so uh, it wasn't in very good condition even apart from these uh, obvious damage spots 
I think I'll just put that in the recycle bin. All right, there's actually other stuff underneath here other than bottles. We're nearly, you know, it won't take us long to finish these bottles up and we'll see what's underneath. Here's another Matoa bottle. This is Hugh Philp, HP. Much harder to get these ones than the Presser bottle I had earlier. It's a little bit older. It's an M under there, Melbourne Glassworks, so around about 1900 to 1910. And again, it's got a breakage at the top and just enough for the marble to get out. So um, it's probably only going to be cut down into a glass or something as well. Uh, in complete condition, that's... And in good condition, that's probably a one to two hundred dollar bottle. Uh, the presses, these ones here, are much more common and probably only a fifty dollar bottle, even in good condition. Right, there's a couple more cods in here. Let's get these out while we're going. Oh, this is a Geelong one. I don't know this one at all. It's got a pictorial of a bird on it. It's Grigsby and McSweeney. I don't know if that's a rare one. This is what they call a bulge neck cod. So there's lots of different patents here. Uh, this one's known as an all-way pour because you can actually pour the drink all directions. And if you don't know what these weird bulby shapes are, they enable you to pour a drink from the bottle without the marble rolling forward and blocking the flow off. So that's known as an all-way pour. This one here... Is a, is a bulge neck. It's a sort of a different design. I think that's possibly quite a scarce bottle. I'd need someone from Geelong to confirm that. But again, it's been broken. Uh, and this one is, uh, I think it's a Niagara patent with four dimples. So there's lots of different patents on the style of enclosure. And hence there's another, another different variety other than names. Now here's a small Matoa bottle. This is a soda water, the six ounce or seven ounce. It's Hugh Philp again. It's an all-way pour and actually still has... Ah, oh, the marble's in it, but there's enough of the top broken for the marble to come out. So normally the marble wouldn't come out. So I don't think I've actually got a complete one of those. So I'll have to consult my Matoa collection and I will keep some of these damaged ones if I haven't got a good example. All right, let's just quickly get the last couple of cod bottles out of here. Oh, this one's a Melbourne one, a McDonald's and Company. I think they're a more common one. It's got an embossed crown on it. Uh, it's got an M on the base for Melbourne Glassworks. I haven't been showing you these marks. I think you can you see the M there. And again, that dates at around around 1900 to 1910, I would say. Uh, lemonade, so that's the larger size, and the top's pretty well all gone off that one, as you can see. I think they're fairly common, I'm not sure, but if it is a common cod, uh, it's pretty well just recycling. Although we could, again, we could cut the top off it. Uh, and the last broken cod here is a another Matoa one. This is quite a rare one. This is a the early Hugh Philp with a bulge top. Uh, and it's slightly well that's the bulge top and this is the all-way pour so there's a good example of a variation for you same company same town and you even notice the m on matoa is really large on the embossing whereas that one's much smaller so that's i reckon probably about 1900 to 1910 i think this one's probably in the 1890s 1895 around about that era it's the older of the two in good condition that's probably many hundreds of dollars. I actually have one, I think, in fairly good condition. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a much harder to get bottle than this, but they're both quite scarce. So they would have been ones that I dug, and I no doubt I would have been bitterly disappointed to find the tops broken. But that's the nature of digging bottles. Unfortunately, most of the good ones are broken. Uh, we have some crown seals here. This is a Matoa one again, and I've collected these. Obviously, I've dug these around Matoa, and that was my hometown where I grew up. Much more recent, this one. This one's probably into the 1960s. Pretty well the last of when you saw embossed bottles. It's got a much later system of marks on the bottom, including a little stippling around the shoulder on the or the heel. So if you see that on bottles, it might be a bit hard to make out there. It's quite dirty. But it's much more recent, probably 1960s. I don't know how scarce these are. This would clean up quite well. And I won't be selling it because it's one out of my Matoa collection. We have a couple more Matoa ones in here. Uh, 
this one, these have been in a box. It's been wet, I think. This one's another Matara one, WD Duncan. And there's another variety here in amber. Uh, they've certainly been in a box that's been wet. This one's got part of the crown seal broken. This one's got a bit of a ding in the top. So they were lemonades, yeah, this one's got quite a few dings. Sometimes you find marks like this in the bottle if they've been in a, in a fire or something, but sometimes it was just very poor quality glass. These would be probably uh, late 20s into the 30s. Uh, they will wash up quite well. I might save a couple of these for our washing bottles video. Um, not sure what they're worth. Probably in good condition, they'd probably bring about $50. The amber one might be a little bit harder to get. But uh, I doubt they'd be worth any more than that. All right, a few more bottles left. We have one with a label. Oh, the whole bottom's gone. I think I found this under a house once, and that's why it's got most of its label. It actually says H. Presser Matoa, which was the same brand that we had on the cod before. Uh, the label's been eaten away. It's obviously not in very good condition, but it's nice to see that still. It was a screw top bottle. With a, well, the cork was probably added later when someone had opened it and maybe lost the top. Uh, I think that's probably a repurposed whiskey bottle. It is. It says whiskey on the base here. So the company has probably repurposed a whiskey bottle. They used to reuse bottles all the time. Um, I think that's probably a 1930s or so bottle with the screw top. Clearly no base in it. But it's only interesting because of the label. I'll probably keep it just because of that. Ah, we have some bit of hardware and general stuff in the bottom here. This one's a whiskey, a Mitchell & Co. Extremely common, a really nice bottle, uh, Imperial Quart. It's circa 1900. They can go back to the late 1800s. Uh, it's probably only a $10 bottle because they are very, very common. You can get them with different names on, and that does make all the difference. But uh, Mitchell & Co. is the most common one. Yeah, a nice bottle, but not worth a great deal. Uh, we had some of these beers the other day. Uh, the MBCV Spade beer, probably 1920s. Maybe a whisker earlier, but I'd say probably about 1920. Early crown seal, uh, applied top, nice green but only 5 to $10, depending how clean it washes up. And the last one here is a classic tomato sauce shape. It's got a big slither off the top, unfortunately. Uh, it's a Geelong and WD Prescott. No. Geelong and WD Press. Is that short for Preser uh, Preserving Company Limited, I think? Tomato sauce. It's got a G in the middle. Some of these will go a nice purple in the sun. So it's probably around about, it's got a bit of a purple tinge, around about 1915, 1910, that era, uh, but not worth a great deal with the big chip off it. They're fairly common. So we might get five for it washed up, but that's about it. That's all we've got with the bottles. I think we might finish this video up here and we'll go through the rest of this box of general hardware. Actually, there's just nothing of interest in here at all. I think I'll just sort this out off camera. Other than the hollow punch set, which I'll keep. It's a modern one made in China, but they look like they've never been used. I'll probably keep those. And there's just general hardware and screws in here. There's really not much of interest. A little um, dusk mask that can go in the bin. So we won't worry about any of that. I think we'll call this video quits with these bottles. I will... What will I do? I'll work out a rough list and I'll wash a few of them up and I'll get back to you shortly. So I'm back now and I did empty the tub and I'll show you what I found. It wasn't very exciting and I did wash up some of the bottles. So I'll have a quick chat about values there in a minute. This was out of the box. Um, there wasn't much. As I said, there was a lot of hardware and packets of things, most of which had been wet and fell apart. So uh, all those cardboard backing pieces can go in the recycle bin. That reduces some of the stuff going to landfill. And we can't do much with all this sort of stuff. So that'll have to go in the bin. I pointed out the hollow punch set I will keep. Uh, there was a five-piece screw extractor set. And I'm very sus on these. This package has come apart too. 
because they were $2.50. So I'm guessing the quality of the steel in these things is not very good, and I don't think I'll keep them because there's a fair chance if you try and use one of these extractors getting a broken stud out, it will probably break the piece off in there. I don't think the steel would be very good quality. So that might just go in the $1 box at the shop and someone else can fight with them. A little bit of cord, I think it's for blinds or curtains or something, that can go in the $1 box. You could probably use it as starter cord for your lawnmower, perhaps. Uh, there was a whole pile of jigsaw blades, various types. I'll keep those here. I don't know which ones of those I'll use. Varying qualities, too. I think some of them are quite okay. Uh, assorted hardware I'll just put into jars, as you know I do. There's a padlock with some keys, some pitcher wire, pitcher hanging wire, which I'll use. Uh, a good spade bit that was an Irwin brand one that one so that should be fine a few springs uh, another marble out of a a cod bottle and various other bits and pieces as i said i'll put into jars uh, some vernier calipers here i think they're only cheapies they might just go in the shop for five dollars um, a very early silver plate spoon but it hasn't got enough going for it it's only plated probably just going with brass bin a little bit of aluminium bit of stainless steel and some TV rabbit ears. I will keep these because the telescopic antenna parts of them are in very good condition. And sometimes I'm looking for a replacement for a boom box or something. So uh, they will be perhaps handy down the track. Now with the bottles. I'm keeping all the Matoa ones. I did wash up a couple and you can see they're cleaned up pretty well. Uh, all the broken cods I washed up. And uh, I will keep all those just until I dig out my collection and, um, and you know, there's no point keeping a broken one if I've got a good example of it. Uh, the source I'll probably sell. It probably might get $5. It has got the damage to the top. Interestingly, this one has a purple tint at the top, and you probably won't see it in the light of the shed, but it's a greenish tint at the bottom, so that's unusual. You don't see that all the time. There are some dings to the glass as well. Uh, this um, later bottle cleaned up quite well. You can see that's quite glossy now. Still a little hazy, but not too bad. All I did was use uh, warm soapy water, and we'll address that in the next video. I didn't clean these back ones up because we'll use them as examples in our How to Clean Bottles um, episode. So there we go. Value-wise, I think we could probably maybe estimate $10 here. We could certainly sell the calipers. Uh, and the rest of it will go into jars to be sold mostly. Uh, the padlock and the key will probably sell. And the bottles, well, the ones I'm selling, we're probably only looking at the back row, $10, $20, $25 for the lot, maybe $30. Depends how they clean up. So I'm going to maybe, I didn't get the notepad out, but let's just say, let's just say $40 return. Um because there's a few things, like I put these in the $1 box at the shop and they sell quite quickly. So we'll say 40 bucks. I didn't get my total. Um, we must be pushing towards $8,000, but uh, there's another box emptied. Pretty pleased about that. So the unboxing series continues. Another box down, another week down, another piece of space. Can you have a piece of space? Uh, a lack of something, a void to uh, get me close to having that shed actually useful. Thanks for watching, guys. This is the last video I'll be putting out for this year. It's New Year's Eve tomorrow. I uh, probably won't get this up until tomorrow. So I would like to wish everyone a happy new year and uh, a fantastic and prosperous and happy and healthy 2024. Um, and I will see you very soon in the new, de new year with a bottle washing how-to video. There will be more farm videos coming up soon. I'm heading over to the farm in another couple of weeks. There'll be more unboxings. I've got to get on some repairs around here and finish off some projects. And I don't know if many of you do your um, whole New Year's resolution, but uh, I really want to get on and finish off some projects. I've got some, there's even some videos on my channel, if you go back a bit, where it's part one and part two just hasn't happened yet. So I've got to get back onto those jobs. Some of them were waiting on parts and now the parts are here and I still haven't got onto them. Admittedly though, as you guys know, it's been a very busy and disrupted year. Uh, there will be a lot of trips to the farm to disrupt me again, but we'll squeeze everything in. So thanks for watching guys. Have a great one. Bye for now.